Yeah, welcome to, if I can move this, there we go. This uh, latest SDXD event for August, 2023, uh, RideSD and SDXD exploring the digital heuristics and public transportation um, host, oh, hosted or featuring Brianna and Connor. So thanks for you guys for coming. <laughs> Um, this is our second in-person event since uh, we started transitioning back to in-person events. We went back to uh, we went to online events, and now we're doing hybrid. So this is a hybrid event. Um, so there's like eight people, along with one amazing volunteer online, all the way on the east coast, handling that side. So that's amazing. Um, so shout out to Ellie or Eli, sorry. And um, this wouldn't be possible without our amazing uh, board. So thanks, uh, Ben, James, Melissa, CJ, and Darren. And uh, oh yeah, and uh, yeah, welcome Darren and CJ since they're our newest board members. So uh, welcome to them. And uh, it's also not possible without our volunteers again, Eli and uh, uh, Evelyn, and you'll see her taking pictures around. So um, quick plug, you can join our Slack. Um, we'll, we'll share it other places. It's in Meetup, it's in uh, our website. So join our Slack, that's where we post the events. We post job postings, all that fun stuff. And, um, and if uh, you have any, um, if you have sponsorship interests or you wanna be a speaker, you can uh, look that up in our website and there's forms to do that too. Okay. Um, we also have a YouTube channel where you can check our past talks. We have uh, quite a few talks that we were able to record uh, along the pandemic. There's pretty good ones around resumes and um, interviews and all that stuff. So check that out. And finally, our agenda. So we just lived through the networking, uh, sorry, the check-in and networking. Uh, after this, we'll have the workshop and presentation. And after that, we'll have some time to mingle and we'll talk about a possible place to continue the party if we please after this. So there's plenty of stops uh, we can go. And, um, oh, and I forgot to introduce SCXD. So we are a community of over 5,000 members that meet uh, to connect, inspire, and learn around the world since, the, since we went online. And um, it's awesome to have you guys here and to continue these events. So thanks so much. And, um, well, now we'll hand it off to our um, host, um, Brianna and Connor. So uh, we worked with Brianna before and she's been amazing uh, to work with. And uh, and this event came up with, uh, because Connor is part of Ride SD and he'll tell you more about it, but they're dedicated, nonprofit dedicated to improving and bringing attention to the public transportation in San Diego. And from there, um, we'll, we're started talking about the exploration of uh, the UX around all that. So uh, I'm sure we'll all have fun. Hopefully some of you have experienced uh, the public transit. If not, maybe it'll motivate you to, uh, or maybe have some thoughts about it. So uh, without further ado, let me bring up Brianna. All right, Hey everyone. <laughs> hey everyone, so I'm Connor. Um, I'm here with Ride SD, which is a group I helped found. And then also, before I talk about that, I'm going to plug myself really quick. So um, I am a software engineer. I worked for eight years building B2B SaaS software and machine learning systems for the real estate software market. Um, but recently, I quit my job and founded my own company it's called In Practice. I'm doing this with two other people. And what we're looking to do is build AI-powered software to help doctors' offices and medical providers fight insurance claim denials. Um, so if you are, and we're looking to talk to people in this space. We like started like two months ago. So if you or someone you know works in medical billing or health tech, please come talk to me. I'd love to chat. Reach out. Um, so yeah. So I also help found Riot SD. So what is Riot SD? Right SC is a community based nonprofit um, in San Diego that's advocating for better public transit. Um, so our overarching goal is to get more people riding public transit, the bus, the trolley, um, 
And so it's kind of two ways we go about that. The first is by advocating for uh, public transit to be better. So easier to use, more enjoyable, and kind of more, more importantly, like more frequent and reliable and useful. Um, and then also we want to educate about all the ways that uh, transit in San Diego is actually pretty good. People like to talk poorly about it, and we do too, because we advocate it for sort to be better. But it's actually pretty good. It has a lot of good routes. You can you can do a lot of trips on it. And just to kind of motivate why public transit is good, um, it's good for the climate, it's good for air quality, it's good for equity, it's good for getting cars off the road or bypassing traffic. Um, and it enables vibrant neighborhoods that are good for the community and good for local businesses. Um, so why and how did Ride SD get started? So actually a year ago, I was really annoyed with the Pronto app and signing up for it. That's how you <laughs> use the page of public transit with your phone. And it pissed me off enough that I wrote a tweet thread about it. Yeah, I actually went through and counted how hard it was to sign up, and it took me 191 clicks. And so we're going to listen to this later in the, in the heuristic evaluation. Um, and so I wrote this tweet thread, and it got a ton of likes and retweets in the local San Diego Twitter community and also the transit Twitter community. And it got people, it kind of struck a nerve, and people got all fired up and wanted to help solve this problem. And so we ended up writing an open letter to MTS asking them to support Apple Pay and contactless credit cards. So you could just tap to pay and not even need, a, need an app at all. Um, so just kind of sidestep that. And while we were writing this open letter, a ton of people had their own complaints about public transit and wanted to like prove all these other things. And so it like kind of snowballed and we ended up getting a bunch of people involved. And we're now, uh, just this month, uh, incorporated as a 501c3 nonprofit. So we're actually official now, not just a band of group of people. Um, and yeah, so local advocacy actually works. Like I'm going a little bit of a soapbox here, but we successfully advocated MTS, which is the transit agency, to like make a plan for supporting these types of payment methods. And hopefully next month, it should, the board should be approving it for a rollout next year. So get excited for that. Um, and like this would have taken, this probably wouldn't have happened for years had we not been act actively advocating them to do it. But because just there was a, a few of us bugging them about it, basically, um, it ended up happening. Um, and so I think a lot of people focus on like national politics a lot, but it's really like impossible to change those. And that has often has less of a day-to-day -day impact on your life. So you can get involved in local politics, local advocacy, and actually have a big impact. But it's local politics and advocacy are actually really confusing because there's not like a lot of news organizations focusing on them. So find a local group about something you're interested in, the climate, housing, bicycling, public transit, public transit. <laughs> and, you know, follow them on Twitter, go, in, go to some of their meetings, sign up for the newsletter. They, a lot of these groups need design and research skills too. So if you any of you look into use your professional skills for good, uh, reach out. Um, and then before we do jump into the heuristic evaluation, let me just step back a bit and talk about San Diego Public Transit. So there's kind of two transit agencies in in the county. There's MTS, which is the biggest one, and they run all the buses in South County. And they also run the, the red trolleys, the light rail system in San Diego that goes from the border all the way up recently opening to UCSD and then all the way out to Santee in East County. And then there's NCTD, the North County Transit District, and they run the buses up there. And then also the coaster and sprinter rail, which goes from Escondido over to Oceanside and from Oceanside down to down, downtown San Diego. And they both recent, uh, in the past few years, came out with the Pronto fair payment system. So it's like a unified fair payment system between the two systems. So you can tell one's a red and one has a blue color. So they made it purple to join them together. Um, and that's nice because it's a you only need one system to pay for, for both, both transitors. Um, and so what is Pronto? It's the, it's the whole fair payment system. So there's actually a few ways to pay. You can get a physical Pronto card and load it with money and then tap it when you get on the bus or trolley. Um, or you can go to these ticket vending machines on the right here and buy a paper ticket and like a well, one-way paper ticket. Or you can use the app, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. And you get the app and you go through the signup process, load money on, and then you scan a QR code as you get on the bus or trolley. Um, 
And since I'm a software engineer, I'm not going to run the heuristic evaluation. I'm going to turn it over to Brianna here, UX designer. Um, so yeah, thank you. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Brianna, or you can call me Marie. I'm a senior product designer. I work at a small health tech startup called Arcara, and I am a transit writer. I'm going to move right along because I don't like having everyone look at this giant photo of my head. Um, so why are we here today? So we're here today because Ponto's poor sign of experience prevents potential writership, and we're experienced professionals, and we could do something about this. So RideSD is partnering with the SDSD community to identify usability issues with the Ponto signup flow. And RideSD can take uh, the usability issues that we identify and advocate for MTS to address these issues. So that's how advocacy works. All right, so here's our agenda today. I'm going to talk really briefly about what a heuristic evaluation is, if you're not familiar with it, or it'll be a nice refresher if you are. We'll talk about how you conduct a heuristic evaluation. We're going to break up into small groups. It'll be really easy because a lot of you are already at tables, so say hello to your small group. Um, where we'll, we'll uh, collaboratively conduct heuristic evaluations. So we'll go off and do our own thing. Hopefully we can play some cool music. I don't know if we figure that out, but it'll be a whole vibe. And then we will reconvene to discuss the activity as a group. But we will get to the whole heuristic uh, activity breakdown when we get there. I'll explain it more when we get there. But let's talk about what heuristic evaluation is. So a heuristic evaluation is a method for evaluating an interface's usability using predefined usability principles. Um, oftentimes, I think when we talk about heuristic evaluations, we're talking about the Gilson heuristic. There's 10 of them. And if you are a seasoned U, uh, UX professional, you're probably very familiar with them. But heuristics really can be anything. And anyone can make up their own set of essentially guidelines saying, you know, what makes something accessible or not accessible, uh, usable um, or, or not usable. But as you see on the right, uh, most people focus on the Nielsen heuristics, uh, and that's what we'll be using today to conduct our heuristic evaluation. So there are benefits and drawbacks to conducting a heuristic evaluation. Um, some of the benefits are, I mean, you can immediately, if you have an experience or an interface that you need to evaluate, it's a set of guidelines, right? So you can immediately use these guidelines and kind of check it against the experience that you're trying to figure out is usable or not usable. Um, it's a really quick and easy way to get started um, testing the usability of something. And it assists you in making some data-driven decisions because these heuristics are kind of universally agreed upon as like what makes something usable. Um, so it's really you know taking these heuristics to evaluate it versus using your subjective uh, opinion of what's good and what's bad. Um, so you kind of have some weight when you're trying to say like, hey, I found these problems like using these heuristics that have said like, this is what makes something usable or not usable. Um, and because they're kind of you know, these global heuristics that apply to just general usability, they're pretty broad. And so the findings that, that you find when using them are really applicable to any, any user, all user personas. So it has some benefits, right? You can get moving quickly. Uh, of course, you know, this is never going to be as good as like user testing. We're always going to advocate for user testing, but sometimes user testing can take some time to find your users and set up those calls. So this is a way that, like we said, you can get started quickly. Um, you know, if you do this, you're not getting user feedback, which ideally you want, but I'm also um, assuming that, you know, many people who work in the UX field, I've heard, not, don't always have access to users. So it's at least some way to get some usability feedback when maybe you don't have access to the users. Again, ideally you have access to your users. Um, and one of the drawbacks is that when you're doing a method like this, you're really asking closed-ended questions, right? You have these lists of guidelines, and then you're looking at the interface in this case, and you're saying, like, you know, does it meet this guideline, yes or no? Um, it's really not giving you much more detail beyond that, but it is helping you find issues. All right. So um, the heuristics checklist, we're going to go through all 10 of Jacob Nielsen's 10 usability heuristics. Again, if you're a seasoned UX professional, I'm sure you know this. If you're an emerging UX professional, you know, we're going to go through them. I'm not going to go like too in depth um, and there's no test. You don't have to memorize these if you haven't seen them before. And I know also we have some people in here that I don't even think are, you know, UX professionals or emerging UX professionals, since we have some right SD friends do. We're not testing you here. We're just going to walk through kind of like 10 guidelines for uh, evaluating the usability of an interface or an experience. All right. 
So the first one is visibility of system status. So as you're walking through that experience and that interface, this is like, you know, you're looking at it and asking questions like, is this experience keeping users informed about what is going on? Or are they kind of left wondering or guessing? So to provide appropriate and timely feedback to the user. Again, you think about like not keeping them guessing or wondering or looking like they are kind of informed the entire time. The second heuristic is a match between the system and the real world. Is it speaking the user's language? And that could mean you know, the literal language that they speak, but it really just more figuratively is speaking in a language that people can understand, specifically not using unfamiliar jargon, um, especially no like technical jargon, which oftentimes makes its way into uh, visual experiences because you know people use a lot of like engineer engineering lingo I find sometimes to be right to like why. Um, and it's more than just language. It could be, you know, the matching the mental model or the presenting the information in a natural and logical order that people can understand. The third um, heuristic from Nielsen's heuristic is user control and freedom. So when you're evaluating this in an experience, you're asking users easily navigate through the experience, or is it easy for them to get in maybe a situation where they feel kind of stuck? Um, and if they do get into any situation like that, is it easy, is it easy to recover? Kind of about wayfinding and getting through easily. Uh, I'm going to step over here to read number four, which is consistency and standards. Um, when you're evaluating this, you're asking yourself questions like if it follows the typical platform conventions, you know, if it's mobile, does it function like a mobile app or a mobile experience? Um, is it increasing cognitive load or causing people to think more than they need to? All right, we're on to number five, which is error prevention. Um, does this experience provide what's, what's needed to prevent errors from happening? We really want to prevent people from errors because errors are really frustrating and don't make users feel good. And it can actually divert them away from using the experience. That's something that um, I found with my friends in Pronto uh, specifically. Uh, so is it easy to make a mistake in this experience? And is it easy to make similar to a mistake as a slip? Um, you don't need to remember this, but it's another type of error, but it's an error from lack of attention. But either way, is it easy to mess up? Number six is recognition rather than recall. Does it force the user to remember any information? We have a hard time kind of recalling things from memory. We're much better at you know, recognizing things that we see. I think that's why I assume many people here would prefer a multiple choice test over a blue book exam. I know I did, because you'll see the answer, you'll recognize it, but blue book kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> are necessary elements to the experience visible on that screen? Or if they're not visible on that top level, are they easy to access? Number seven is flexibility and efficiency of use. So um, this is kind of getting into that more power user um, type persona, but for people who are taking frequent actions or just any frequent actions that this experience is trying to get people to do, like is it tailored to those frequent actions and for those experienced users, does it have shortcuts so they can bypass the things that they don't need to see over and over again? Number eight is aesthetic and minimalist design. And that's not talking about a very specific design style. It's not like, you know, flat or, you know, like a very, very, very minimal design. Really here, it's just about not including more than what's needed, you know, not having way too much content on the page. And um, are you prioritizing the right content um, effectively? All right, on to the last two. So number nine is help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. Ideally, we've done all the work that we can on the error prevention front to help users from uh, encountering errors in the first place, but they're always gonna happen. So when they do, is it really easy to recover from them? So is your system offering helpful error message uh, messages and is it easy to resolve the issues with you know, the error uh, handling that you're getting? And then lastly is help and documentation. Uh, of course, and this is kind of res uh, resonates with me as someone who works in business software that like a lot of people want to throw like help bubbles on everything and just explain each thing. So it's not saying that like, hey, that's the ideal like usable guideline. Like this isn't saying throw a help bubble on everything, but it is saying that when people do need more context or more extra help that you're kind of anticipating that and providing that, um, you know, the ability to expand and get more information when needed. So that's us powering through. You don't need to remember even half of what I said. It's actually going to be on the worksheets at your table when you're working collaboratively with your group. Um, if you need a refresher, you can also just Google Nielsen uh, heuristics and 10,000 articles will pop up because this is, um, I did not make these up. I did. All right. 
And when you're doing the heuristic evaluation and you're going through all of those heuristics and you're seeing like whether, you know, this part of this experience, you know, violates error prevention, or maybe it does it really well. Um, when you're finding the places where it kind of violates that heuristic, um, you can choose to add a severity rating to the issues that you find. And assigning ratings can be really helpful in giving you a way to prioritize addressing the most disruptive usability issues. If um, you find all these issues, and I mean, for me, it's typically taking it to like my dev team, like, hey, look, all these issues that I find. But if you present all of these issues that you find, I think if everything's important, then nothing is important. Um, so if you're able to say like, oh, I found like this issue and it's more of a, a one more cosmetic problem, but you found like these three issues and they're four, they're catastrophic and they really prevent people from using this experience successfully. But kind of like prioritize and highlighting the ones that are the most disruptive to the users, you can kind of prioritize getting those worked on first. All right, so how do you do it? Um, I think it really looks different, at least for me, depending on like what I'm critiquing, meaning that if I'm doing a single page or a multi-page flow, I might approach it differently. If I'm doing it on desktop versus mobile, maybe I'll approach it differently. Um, so in this case right here, I'm on the like, well, spoiler alert, well, you'll get to this page later, but this is the sign up page. Um, and so I, in this case, I was kind of going page by page and then on each page kind of going through all the heuristics. And so here I kind of found three, don't pay too much attention to the right. I'm not going to spoil you. You're going to find your own, but there's some, uh, examples of violations that I found on that page. And so next to it, I took a screenshot and I kind of wrote the issues that I was finding. Um, I didn't put a rating here, but you can, but generally I might have kind of a report like this that I present to, um, the team that I'm showing my findings to. Um, and so I might, you know, add the severity rating as I go, or I might find all the issues at the end, I might add a severity rating. I don't think there's really like a right or wrong way to do it. Um, and here I'm just showing violations that I found, but sometimes it's good to show not just like heuristic violations, but heuristic successes. Um, but that's kind of up to you as well. If you're trying to pitch, you know, things up the app as well, which I think is kind of nice. You generally don't want to go to people and be like, here's everything bad. But uh, maybe in today's case of content, we do. Uh, but here's one way that it might look or that you might approach it. All right, so for today's activity, um, we said four to five. We're going to break up into groups that are about table size. Um, and if you're not at a table, I don't know, we'll figure that out. If you can join one or I don't know. Yeah, just go to a table. Yeah. You need some people. There's a, um, here. there's a table here. There's a table only has people over there. So find a table. Um, and then in your group, um, maybe just find one. I mean, everyone can do it if you'd like, but try to find at least one person in your group who um, doesn't have the Pronto app. Um, you can get on the Balboa Park Wi-Fi. Now the Wi-Fi can be, or the connection can be a little spotty down here, but the Balboa Park Wi-Fi is free to get on, easy to get on, and no password, and I think it works pretty well. Um, so ideally, we'd love to have you download the Pronto app. Um, create an account, and then create a transit pass. Um, I do want to note that going through the entire flow, like if you were to uh, fully go through all the steps of creating that transit pass, it does require you to add money. And we're obviously not going to make you add money. Like I'm not going to, that's not a requirement of being in this workshop, mm -hmm. but you can go through all the steps. And then when you get to the end and, you know, once you to like pay, you just don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but the smallest option I think you can add is $5. And I think that you're probably so inspired to ride transit after this, but you probably want to create the pass lock with them too. So if you like, um, but it's not a requirement. And so once you've found that person to get the app, um, we want you as your group on the table, take your time and walk through the sign up flow together. And then on your papers, there should be pens and one shared packet or maybe two for your table. We'll just discuss and take notes of usability issues on your evaluation worksheets as you go. This is not a competition. Um, you know, we're here in a workshop. This is not meant to be comprehensive and we're not going to be scoring you. Um, it's just to go through the exercise of kind of like doing a critique um, if you haven't done one before. And um, at the end, ideally, we are looking to like take note of some of the problems that you find. So it's one for you to kind of have that exercise and then two for us and write SD to be able to kind of combine and um, advocate for fixing some of these issues that we find. But I encourage you to go slow and take your time and discuss in your groups. I think we're going to have about 30 minutes, 30 minutes in groups. Hopefully we can play some nice music for you. Maybe a bit more. We'll see how we're feeling. Um, and then as you go through the sign up flow, you know, you're probably really going to do it once. But if you ever want to go back and like need to see some app screenshots, I put a little QR code on the top. I mean, ideally someone actually is at your table like live going through the steps. But if you need to go back and see something, 
um, that is there for you if you just want to see screenshots. It'll just open like a Figma link on your phone, but let that be a secondary resource. And with that, um, I think that's good. I think we can break up into groups. Does anyone have any give me questions before we get started? Or we feel good? We feel good. Okay, let's do it. Awesome. Yeah, go. We're gonna play some games. Play some music. Okay, so virtual folks, you heard the news, we're going to be split up into groups, and we are going to do heuristic evaluations. You will get a digital copy of the worksheet that's going to be dropped into chat, there's going to be one for each group. I have randomly assigned you to breakout rooms, there is about 13 of you if I got that correct, so there's going to be two groups of four and one group of five. If you've not been assigned to a group and I release you all out into the breakout rooms, let me know. Um, but yes, uh, you're going to do a heuristic evaluation. You can choose one person to download the app. Yes, it might be clunky with Zoom blur, blurring out your phone screen and stuff like that. But that is the experience of working together and doing this sort of interesting collaboration. So you're going to be split off into groups. One person's going to download the app. You will take notes virtually, and we will do your first heuristic evaluation. Don't worry. It doesn't need to be done perfect. The most important thing is to try and explore. Any questions before I release you into breakout rooms? Yeah, I was wondering if if yeah. uh, you could provide just the URL to the screenshots. Uh, I'm just on a, a laptop computer, so uh, it'd be nice to not have to use my phone for that. A uh, URL to the uh, worksheet? No, to the screenshots. On See on the slide how there's ah. a, a QR code in the upper right? Yes. OK. Uh, I will get that to you. Thank you. Thank you. So All right. We're going to get the link to the worksheet in our breakout rooms then? Or yes. In the, OK. All right. Awesome. Thank you for asking questions. Any more? OK. All rooms should be open, and I am getting you the worksheets. Share, copy link. OK, we are going to go to chat. Chat. Group one doc. Control V. Uh, Share group to doc. Share group three doc. Okay, now let's get this QR code for this person. Why is this so hard to do? Oh, technology. Let's go into recent, and then I can just pop that right at the top of the document. Uh, 
I should be broadcasting to all rooms, but let me, hopefully my, I should be out to every single room. Doesn't seem that that is working. Let me get these links in first. Come on, come on, phone. Come on. One. Okay. Uh, Connor Proctor, Will Proctor, Rachel. Hi, folks. Are you around? Okay. Hi. Hi, um, Dina. Uh, hi. So um, the link you have to, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but just putting the link in the main chat, basically um, what happens is we don't get it when you're in the breakout room. We can't oh. access that chat. So oh, either yeah. you put in it in before we go into the, the breakout room. And I've been through this before. So I think, <laughs> yeah, where we're all in there, it's very, yeah, exactly. The breakout room just ends up being this kind of group that you're kind of in there. We can't even communicate with you. We have to actually come out to the main room to communicate back with you just to let you know. I've been trying to broadcast my voice for a little while. So thank you yeah. so much for taking initiative and letting me know. Yeah, I've been and, bouncing and that's on the, the groups. Yeah, it is just, um, yeah, this is one of the things in the breakout room that's really limiting. <laughs> oh boy. Um, Thank you for letting me know. I'm going to be swinging by each group yeah. and dropping the info in. Yeah, I, yeah, I think if you, I, I'm trying to think, if you had dropped it in before we all went in, I think we still have access to the meeting chat. But yeah. once you're in the breakout room, like I said, you're kind of in this, you know, Boy. separate group and separate item. So you'll have to come in and kind of send it to us. In fact, I think right yeah. now, yeah, okay. I'm going to yeah. swing by and drop in because I think some folks who are here virtually might be away from their computers so yeah significant exactly knowledge. and then um i think in our case what happened was all three of us have the app already so we can't really go through the account setup workflow but i think uh, one person's just going to remove the app and start all over i'm like are you sure you want to do that okay <laughs> so, okay thank you yeah thank you so much yeah. now i gotta go back to the room now i think i was in number two yeah yes i can send you to group number two Okay, oh, there we go.
Okay. Okay. Hi, group number one. Hey, Eli. Hi. I am, I've been informed that for your breakout room, you do not have access to your group one doc. Um, so I am going oh, around hey, Eli. and I'm dropping in everyone's doc. I, I'm speaking to Eli. Um, Eli, I, if you are speaking, I cannot hear what you're saying for some reason. Hello. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, I was saying that you didn't get access to your group docs, so I'm bouncing around and I'm dropping over um, the Google Docs so you can actually be able to take notes and see a lot of the heuristic stuff. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. But going good so far? Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. The groups are supposed to be larger, but I think some folks might have gotten disconnected. I might move around some folks. Are you okay if I join you with another group? That's fine. Yeah. Or I'm okay. All right, then I'll be heading out. All right, thank you. Break out those. We're going to move to group three. Move to group three. Perfect. Hi, group. Um, Hi, Eli. Uh, I'm going to be giving you access to, um, actually, I think uh, Rachel and Lauren, do you have access to group one's document that I dropped yes. before? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be sharing that with you all. I had to merge some of the groups. I think some of the folks who were online virtually um, might have stepped away from their devices. Um, mm -hmm. So you all are now going to be on the group one document. We're staying agile. We're working with it. Um, yeah. Any questions so far? No, I think I understand for right now. Okay. I'm going to be running around. Feel free to pop into the main room or uh, message me if anything. Eli, out. All right. Thank you. room we're gonna go straight into here oh okay hello apologies to interrupt the flow state i'm going to be giving you access to your group document oh okay thank you perfect had to rearrange some groups a bit but you will still be group number two um okay. feel free to keep going with your progress <laughs> uh any questions so far No, we're just getting set up. Okay, I think yeah. now that I've got my my phone in, the yep. in. And thank you, Darren, for taking the initiative to do this. <laughs> While we figure out who. Yeah, I, I don't know how else we would do it if we would be. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> be turning the the phone around towards the camera or something. So. I think. Yeah. All right. So. So hold on. Okay. So I think. I'll let you get to it. Hi. Where was it? Okay. We're doing great. We're doing awesome. This is so good. Look at everybody working. We're doing it. We are doing it. Oof. Oof. Yee. Um, hi, Eli. Looks yeah. like we want to screen share in our group. And so you need to, is that something that you can control? Give us screen share rights? Um, yes, I can give you screen share rights. There might be an issue where it 
um, might bump off the SDXD screen share, but I can navigate that technical difficulty. Um, if screen sharing doesn't work, um, we can do it in like a way more rustic way of showing your phone screen while you're presenting and going through the process. Yeah, but I've given you access so you should be able to uh, screen share. Oh, hello? Athena? Are you, uh, yeah, are you allowed, are you able to give uh, Darren screen share rights or does he have to come back to the room here? Um, yeah, I was saying that I gave uh, multiple participants the ability to okay. screen share, um, but okay. I'm saying if it runs into an issue, I'll try to fix it. Um, worst okay. case, um, yeah. Okay, let me see if it helps. Uh, I will return to the room, thanks. <laughs> SCXT team is the host. Perfect. Confirmation. Okay, so one okay. thing I one thing that uh, for error prevention, right? Like number for number five, error prevention. Here's a good one. I think the password thing can be can be removed. It should it should or add biometrics in there. Like face ID. On where the whole add money part you're talking about? No, 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 no. In uh sign up, there's a oh, okay. it's asking for a password. Oh, in there. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's doing that, you know, please, you know must be at least eight characters contains each of the following one uppercase one lowercase and all that stuff um if it can add face id Like use face ID for password or something. I don't know. Hmm. I also think that the text on the disclaimers here is very small. Like, I understand that we're looking at this, but even like imagining this proportionally on a cell phone, that's pretty tiny text. And I feel like it might, since most people when creating a password usually use an uppercase letter and a number in it anyway, it might just, it might be the kind of thing that doesn't need, that could be put in an error message if the user puts in a password that doesn't fulfill their requirements or something. Because mm -hmm. as is, this is, the the attempt at making this more accessible ironically makes it because if I were looking at this on a sign up page, I would just skim right over that because it's too small and it's too clumped together, and there's not enough space on the page unless we unless it unless the they wanted to implement a scroll bar to make the text any bigger. I mean, I, I think I'm a fan, though, of disclosing the password requirements because, um, I mean, for me, it's always a, a point of frustration if you enter something and then it rejects it and then it tells you. And, it's, and I always feel like, why didn't you tell me that? If that sounds good. Oh, Ellie, uh, Eli. Yeah. Um, let me see if my audio. Are we 10 minutes out? I think we're 10 minutes out. Yeah. OK, I'll pop over to the other group and let them know. Sounds good. All right. All right. So I'm just I'm just clicking on. Hey, I don't mean to interrupt this wonderful. I was just sitting here watching. Like, oh my god, this is so good. 
but we are about nine minutes out from time. Uh, so yeah. don't worry if you didn't fill out the whole entire worksheet. You are doing awesome, in my humble personal opinion. Um, so keep grinding away. Keep going through whatever you can through the app. No need to rush. Have fun. <laughs> Thank you. We didn't really get anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? Tell me about it. No, no, we're getting somewhere. It's just like we're we're like just discussing it rather than um grading it. That's totally fine. We yeah. got a few grades. Um, okay, so grade. let's go. <laughs> let's go to the next one. I'll let you flow. Which is the unverified account. If that's two levels of, of that verification there. So there's just the I am not a well, robot. In there. I, think, I mean, like, I would I'm say error it. prevention on this. Sorry, go ahead. I would say error prevention on this because like, okay, well, okay, well. I'm a user. I'm going to suppose to identify a bicycle. I'm like, what about the person riding the bike? Do I include that? Mm. This is better when it's like separate images, I think, rather than one person on a bike. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not right? sure. So, that like, so the... I'm not sure that the. Um, I'm not sure that the. People creating the app have any control over the catch-up function, though. From well, my... they don't have control over the capture function, but they can. They don't have to use the capture function. The catch-up function is meant to catch bots and fake accounts. I mean, that's true. They're, they're just using the third party um, verification here. So um, we can note that that is just another point for errors um, and and question that. But yeah, I get they're probably sort of breaking that down. It's going to be outside their hands. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know, Eli, we're probably about out of time, right? But uh, do we have a minute to hop over and look at maybe verify account here? Yep, good on me. Haven't gotten any memos yet that we're heading back to the main room. Wow. Okay, so taking a look at column four here, verify account. Sign in page. I don't know if the... You are I... being called to the main room. Okay. I'm going to close. Okay, there all we the... go. Uh, Thank we're we're going to be called to the main room in, I think, a few minutes. I'm going to triple check before I kick you all out. But if it suddenly closes, there will be a broadcast right before then. So feel free to hop through. Remember, stay to the things that are within the span of the app itself. And uh, I'll let you it know. Is. Looks like we're breaking out in 55 seconds. <laughs> there we go. All right. Just in time. Don't even need to double check. Any final thoughts on 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 this? The whole goal is uh, <laughs> to like make it for public transportation is to like increase ease of access, but like by increasing the security, like to protect information, they kind of made it more complicated and it's harder for like your average person to use it. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Oops. All right. Does someone from this table want to go next? Yeah. Thank you. Danielle, yeah. Hello, Hello everyone. Um, Danielle here. And when we were going through the flow, I'm actually to say that I downloaded the Pronto app for, but I think you can hear it just now. And the biggest uh, issue was the first one that I came across when I opened up the app for the first time ever. It, I was trying to sign in, um, although it should have been prompting me probably to sign up since I never opened the app before. Um, so that was a big issue. Let, yeah, 
make it really clear that I should be signing up, not signing in, since I've never been there before. And I'll pass. I think one. Only one. Yeah. All right, that's just one. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I guess I'm doing it now. <laughs> okay, sorry for this data. Oh, what happened? Oh. <laughs> Everyone, um, um, one of the things that I noticed is that there wasn't any talk about persona who's using our transit system. I'm sure some of you have been on it. I noticed that the complexion of San Diego is pretty broad. And one of the things I noticed was there was no language switching in the localization. So if you're uh, if the English is your secondary language, um, you have a hard time using it. That's on the thing. Gracias. <laughs> How about at this table? Anyone want to hear? There you go. If you want. <laughs> All right. So the one that we chose to focus on um, was the email verification. Um, so when I went through and did the email verification, it sent me to a link which opened up my web browser. And then the web browser had a button to, what was it, open the app, yeah. get the app. And, just scroll all the way down. and then when I clicked that button, it just scrolled down on that same browser page. And it was like the option of going to the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. Um, and so I just went ahead and went to Google Play. And um, then it took me there where I could... I had already downloaded it, obviously. That's why we're doing the email verification. <laughs> um, so I just went to open, pretending that I'm someone that, you know, like I know people that have all their apps running. You know, they don't know to go to the different apps from one to the other. So I think for like a beginner or someone that's like not super phone savvy, you would kind of get stuck <laughs> a little bit. So we put that under flexibility and efficiency of use. Um, yeah. But there were a few other problems <laughs> too. Um, but yeah, I'll just stop there. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Yeah. All right. How about here? Hi, everyone. I'm Yume. And for our group, we focus more on the sign up and sign go. And also, one problem we identify, which resonates with Rob's point, is that they don't really keep personas in mind. So they think everyone wants to create an account, go through the long process. But what if you're in a really bad uh, internet, like you have internet problems, you're dry, just trying to catch the bus and it's approaching. Um, so we think maybe they can offer a guest mode for people who are just coming here and they only wanted to use it once or twice. Um, and for other people who want to sign up. So getting two flows um, for, for um, more freedom of control. So we think that violates the, um, the uh, free user freedom of control. That's our group's observation. Thanks, Yumi. How about you guys? Kevin? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin. Uh, the most problematic one that we identified was the most common default action that users probably want to do, which is like load funding. It was not clear that that was the primary call to action, and there's a lot of other maybe less common actions that are um, kind of at equal weight to that action. Mm -hmm. So we feel that that could be improved better. We gave that a level three on the heuristic scale. Nice, thanks, Kevin. Hunter? Uh, and adding on to that, uh, one of the things that was really not clear was the distinction between add passes and load money. And if you are so bold as to click on add passes, you're presented with a screen that asks you to select what agency you want. And like one, it's not clear even what an agency is. You don't have the transit system. And two, it's also really not clear which one is like relevant to you. And if you select MTS, then you'll get like the normal like sports type passes. And if you select NCTD, you'll get like coaster passes. Uh, but that was just very unclear uh, as well on like an accessibility thing, sort of unrelated, but there's no option to change the font size. So if you have like vision issues, like it can be in quite small text sometimes. Those are great points. What about over here? Sort of picking, piggybacking off of what some other people have said. Throughout the entire sign up process, it's not clear where you are, how long it's going to take, you know, how many steps you're going to see, what kind of information you're going to need to enter. Um, and that's a big issue if you want to catch the bus quickly. And you don't know that you're going to have to go and check your email and then get a bad link to go to the Google Play Store. 
Um, so that was a really big issue that we saw. Thanks so much. Those are all awesome. Um, back to you. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Well, Actually, I might have you float again because I might do the more questions. Okay. okay. I also wanted to try and get the uh, the people on the call. Like I don't know. If... We're gonna we're gonna try this. I don't know if it's gonna work, but well, this time I don't have the audio on, so maybe your computer. Oh, maybe. Yeah. We'll do it. Wait. Oh. Okay. No, we can do it through here. Okay, so. Uh, Ellie or Eli, uh, sorry, if uh, people on the, on the call, one from each team, want to unmute themselves and we can uh, put the mic to the laptop and <laughs> hear one of your findings. Yeah, awesome. Also, just want to quickly give a shout out. Athena, who was part of one of the groups, just hopped off. So uh, they won't be able to present their ideas, but anybody from any group, feel free to share your ideas. I know you all had great discussions. I popped into them. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah we're still learning this hybrid approach so come off mic and go for it here or, or... yeah yeah that's great thank you hi um our group uh echoing a couple thing uh, things others have said uh about wanting the ability to check out as a guest uh for those really, really just sort of one time or infrequent users um, and we did note that the, somebody mentioned that the text being very small on, on some of these for, for an app. So that was something else. And then just one other kind of thing that we had noted on uh, the error message, um, when signing up and I'm sorry, I got way too many screens open here. Um, it said error and then it says your account has been created successfully. Um, so it's, it's kind of a typical message to go, um, check out your, you know, mm -hmm. verify through your mail, but it was a, a disconnect kind of in that when it says error and something was created successfully. So that was, that was confusing. Awesome. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> Our audio tech doing the work. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll also share just for, for our group. Uh, so I think there was, some disconnect in the mental model that uh, at least some of us had when we went into the app because the first call to the meaningful call to action is to create or add card. And we had a discussion of, uh, well, what card is that? Is that a credit card? Uh, and because some of us had had experience with the app in the past, uh, we knew that you're actually creating a, uh, a virtual card but, uh, you know, imagining somebody going into this first time and just even remembering how I use it when I, when I uh, first used the app, uh, it's just weird to think of the app as not the card itself. Like I thought, oh, when I, when I download the app, then this is my card. And so this concept of creating multiple virtual cards within the app was not really clear to me. And I think uh, that's, that's kind of an assumption that the application is, is making throughout because you first will create this virtual card and then there's another screen later which says, um, name your card. And you know, I thought there that I don't really know how to name this card because I didn't even realize that this is like one of multiple virtual cards that is gonna be kind of in my bullpen. Um, so, so just even, even there, maybe having something like what banks do and say, you know, give an example of like, you know, John's checking account or something. And then maybe then it'll click that, oh, hey, I may actually be making multiple virtual cards here. It's just going to be one of them. And I need to name it to distinguish between them. We have a question. Can you try to add a second virtual card? It's not possible. It gives you a big fat head. Yeah, so it suggests that can you hear me on this thing or whatever. Uh, let's try. Yeah, so it suggests that you can have multiple cards, right? And I, when we saw this, I was talking like, oh yeah, like you know, for you and like your kids that you want to bring on the bus with you, but you actually can't have more than like you can't use multiple cards on one phone. Um, so the app does suggest that, but there's no possibility of that. Um, is any other group online? Um, 
Is there any other groups, Ellie? You're good? Nope, that was both groups. Um, if other folks want to share their thoughts, going to count down from 10, <laughs> 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. <laughs> <laughs> Two, one. I think we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Ellie, so much. Um, and thanks, everyone online. Um, it was great to see you on the screen. Yeah, no, it was awesome. <laughs> Before we close it out, I mean, I just obviously everyone presented. I don't need to talk more, but I was curious if anything else came up um, that was on anyone's mind after everyone talked, or any other things that you wanted to say about your experience, whether it was just with the uh, transit or with the heuristic evaluation, I'll leave it open. But um, thank you. Oh, don't ask me a question. Uh, <laughs> you know, Brady, after we did this great heuristic review, how do I convince the people that I work with that my opinions about the heuristics are things we should actually go and fix? Pronto? Your stakeholders. Yeah, sure. Pronto. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a great uh, thing for Ride FD to advocate for it, Eric. So let's transition to the next slide. That was not a plan. Uh, or else it's better executed than you walking across the room. So um, what we would really love, I know that you kind of wrote on papers, and I, I don't know. We, we don't need to take those papers for you. We'd love to collect them if you'd love to give them to us. If you want to keep it, you're welcome to. Um, in some form, it would be awesome if you could share your critique with Ride SD. And so that could be sending photos, or you can give us the packet. Um, you can send something in some form to contact at ridesd.org, um, whether you want to write it up or we'll also have the recording from this. So we'll definitely go back and kind of like compile the issues that we've heard from the recording. Um, and so once we compile and kind of prioritize what we think are like maybe the most pressing usability issues, and trust me, there are many. Um, we'll have Ryan SD advocating for MTS to address them. Um, I will give like a disclaimer that there'll be a little bit of a lull on this because we're going on vacation. So <laughs> after vacation, we'll compile them. But if you want to follow along and see kind of what Ryan is asking for and maybe how they choose to kind of present these, um, I kind of will talk a little bit about how you can follow along with Ryan SD. Yeah, so come, come join us at Ryan SD. Uh, the QR code here, or you can go to writefd.org. Um, follow us on social media, come to our events. Also, now that you guys all have the Pronto app, uh, <laughs> um, take the trolley, take the bus. The bus isn't as bad as you think. I, I lived in San Diego for six years, and I lived on major transit lines, and I had never taken the bus. And then my brother, who I think is on the Zoom right now, shout out. He forced, he forced me to go through the Pronto app sign up process and then forced me to go on the bus to the Padre game. And it was actually great. And now we take the bus and the Padre game all the time. Um, it's also great to go out, like, to have a drink somewhere better than an Uber. Just find a bar on a good bus line that's close to you and go to the bar, go to a restaurant, and have a drink. Come back way cheaper than an Uber. Yeah, not as bad as you think. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can. And thanks for all you guys' critiques. This is really awesome. All right. Awesome. Great job, everyone. Um, thanks to Connor and Brianna for walking us through this, uh, for bringing Rhinus D to our attention in public transit and the amazing Pronto app. <laughs> this is definitely not a uh, elaborate plan to get everybody to install it. Uh, so, uh, right, right. Let's crash some servers. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, well, typically at SEXD events, after we uh, do all this, uh, we just continue networking. Um, the Menge, uh, really nicely, they're going to have us for at least another hour ish. Um, and after that, we can definitely find a place to go. Um, we'll, we'll post something when we decide, we'll put it on big on the slide so you can all copy the location um, to a place that opens late. So yeah, all right. So thanks everyone. Uh, thanks again, Brianna. Thanks for the Minka Museum. Thanks, Christina. <laughs> Okay, virtual folks.
class is dismissed. Thank you all for your wonderful participation. You rocked. And I'm not just saying that because I'm your facilitator for the night. Genuinely, that was a blast to see you all at work. So take rest or take your local transit and take care. Hopefully we'll see you at the next SDXD event. Thanks, Ed. See ya. Thank you, Ellie. Oh, yeah. oh, thanks so much for coming all this way. Thank oh. you. Bye. Oh. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, start collecting stuff in the bag. Uh, that would be great. Oh, uh, they can keep it. I mean, if they... Okay. If they if they leave it, then let's just leave it and then just wait. Yeah. Let me check in on the here. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, it's super loud. <laughs> um. Can you hear me, Ellie? Yep, I can hear you. All right. Great, great stuff. <laughs> um, thanks, Darren, for for speaking uh, in front of everyone. I don't know if we have. Uh, oh, yeah. Thanks so much. No problem. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks, Rachel, for joining. The other people just left, so I hope they had a good time. <laughs> just. Did it. I'm so hyped. It turned out so good. I'm so Yeah, excited. that's awesome. <sighs> that's great. Thanks for yeah. I mean hope hope you enjoyed it, Darren. Um oh, I, yeah. I, the um I'm glad you guys were able to share things with everyone and in person. Yeah, that was awesome. That it, it worked out where we were part of the 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 whole experience and part of the group and yeah, they, they could hear us, right? Like, could yeah, could the they group... could hear you. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, because you know, I mean, yeah. the one thing is, you know, I just it's hard to see everybody um on the screen right. when I'm talking. So it's it's like you know, like I'm just talking to myself. So I don't really, I can't really read the room if they can hear me or what or whatnot. So that's For great. sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, we were definitely very uh, integrated into the experience, and it's just awesome that you, you know, take the trouble to make it accessible in both of these ways so yeah awesome cool well got yeah glad i mean props to ellie all props to ellie so keep it uh going yeah no oh. i was telling ellie that i wouldn't have come tonight um had it not been hybrid so yeah so uh, thank you thanks for doing it awesome hey really happy. <laughs> 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 yeah. no. let's go Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Even I forget the, the name of some, of the other person that talked, but he got a big laugh in the when he was presenting. Um, so, yeah, it was good. And your countdown definitely got a big laugh. <laughs> that was good. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, hopefully, um, yeah, we can find like ways to make it more interactive through the experience. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, glad, glad we had you guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. And and I and we kind of worked through how kind of how to work get the breakout rooms working. So right, right. So we kind of know now we we're gonna we'll need the screen sharing and then we'll need we got to get all the 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 materials before we go into the breakout room. So that was For good sure. there. You know, we know. Yeah, yeah. Kind of figure, we're all figuring I, it out. You know, as we go. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm thinking it would be good to have like a dedicated person in site, like on site to be like with you, with whoever's like on Ellie, yeah, with Ellie or, um, you know, so that it's like the time. I, I guess that way it's like, it's always, we're always in sync. I try to do that, but uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I, yeah. I just always think of uh, improvements and stuff. <laughs> Hey, we're doing an evaluation of an event that's about doing evaluations. I think exactly. it's pretty on brand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Heuristics. Let me get the, the spreadsheet, the worksheet here. Let me write <laughs> some stuff. Let me, oh, who, who are these uh, beautiful icons? Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very, very um, nice. Yeah. Using um, the SEHC colors. 
I mean, that was the most fun part was bouncing between like, um, I know some of them don't fully pass it, but pass it, bouncing between grayscale to see if the contrast still worked. And mm -hmm. it was it was a lot of fun doing that. Um, oh, nice. Oh, interesting. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. So you were like guessing if, if we were like, if we had to print in black and white, maybe. Or... Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dang. That's, that's that's high level stuff. Nice. I was like, we have to have them in color. They're too nice to be black and white. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. I'm like, I'm um, still exhaling from. We're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna... be behind the scenes, I, I set yeah. up all the breakout rooms and uh -huh. then like four people were not active participants. So I was just like, drop everything. I need to reorganize the groups right now. Oh, dang. <laughs> it was it was all good in the end mm -hmm. it seems like from the experience side everyone was like that was great and i'm like i'm so glad <laughs> <laughs> yeah <sighs> oh man yeah there were about yeah, good. three or four people who just like all internal like um i'm not going to participate or i'm i'm a passive viewer <laughs> like, right I... right yeah it was interesting um uh-huh seeing that too <laughs> it was so good i love this i love this sort of thing yeah and it was some cool findings i mean i like the whole like it's not into languages you can add you can possibly add more than one card but not uh <laughs> it's good stuff it was yeah it genuinely was really like awe-inspiring popping into the groups and hearing some of the thoughts evaluations and also how both groups problem solved working through evaluations virtually in entirely different ways. Oh, so while one group okay. was screen sharing, another group was like actively talking through of like, okay, so I'm doing this thing and it looks yeah, like yeah, this yeah. and it works like this. And then they're like, well, how are you working through that? It was, it was just really awesome. I'm in rambly mode at this point and I'm just going to take a sip of my ginger tea. Oh, that's great. Cool that's down. interesting to hear for sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I think I, that's I why you did a great job of being the the on site liaison for us. Like you know, oh, yeah. Ellie was Ellie was on. You know, she was she had us in the virtual space, but you were kind of the link, and you kind of checked in and kind of connected us back in with everybody. So that was great. I saw you come into our our group a couple times and actually helped us a couple times when we were figuring things out. So cool, yeah, cool. yeah, very yeah. very good job. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I definitely agree. You know, having somebody like Ellie dedicated online, and then somebody on site that's kind of keeping right. keeping the virtual folks in mind and kind of bringing them in when you know when you can, and uh, that's yeah. I think a good a good setup. So yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, because then they like that's the whole focus, and like that's what we do, right? Like we had uh, Evelyn uh, do photography. Um, we had Melissa doing floating mic, like so. That's what delegating is about. So, uh, um, yeah, CJ's helping pick up our all our all our scraps and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, great, great, yeah. well, well planned, well executed. So, mm -hmm. yeah, good, good awesome, event. cool. No, glad glad you that was good. Um, yeah, and thanks for thanks for coming, Garen. So it's good to see you. I, We'll always remember you as the. Uh, I I now uh, use repeatedly the. I want to honor your name. You know, but how, <laughs> how can I honor your name? <laughs> I wish I was. I wish I was remembered for something that was actually my own phrase. Um, I oh, got to come up with. That's how humble one that... you are. That's how. It no, was, no, no, no. It's not know? my phrase. That's the thing. It's not my phrase. I know. It's I know. That I bought. <laughs> but I've been <laughs> remembered by this other person's phrase that I just I just uh, thought was awesome and I kept on using. Oh, oh, that's nice. fine. That's fine. It's a it's 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 a, it's a phrase that's that's worthy of being um, commandeered and then passed on, uh, <laughs> you know, secondhand. So I'm I'm okay with that actually. <laughs> okay, okay. I I may have I may have used it uh, with Eli because I was like, I. I have like five different L E like spelled E A L I in my life right now, and they all say like are called like uh, pronounced differently. So, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, is it Ellie or Eli? It's Which one? it's both. That that's why I'm like I 
when I decided to pick a name that to just go by, I'm like a name that you can't mispronounce. Okay. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I really wanted to say Eli, and then I yeah, but yeah. okay. So no worries. Oh, if you say Eli, you're good. If you say Ellie, you're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um. Well, I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do and like the uh, situation like picking everything up um but yeah also i mean it's pretty late in the east coast i imagine at least so <laughs> yeah i th i think if if we're calling it i'm good mm -hmm. I, I would drop off <laughs> <laughs> well, you're like this is off camera yeah. the other one is hitting um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but genuinely are we all good all set anything i need to do before logging off all set all set yeah um uh i've been thinking like we'll probably post the handbook if anybody wants it in the maybe a link in the chat later but uh oh and then the recording i think it's still going but and our cloud space ran out <laughs> so i it may save to your computer and so i may give you later a link to like upload it to the google drive um so because you started the recording right i think yeah or, okay, cool. Yeah, so that's the only thing we'll follow up later. But yeah, it's okay. probably going to save locally. Solid. Well, take care, y'all. You too. Yeah. Bye, Darren. Bye, Rachel. Bye, everybody. I'm going to stop recording.